just want to say that I love the New Hampshire primaries. Every four years, Iowa goes, hey, how about this? And New Hampshire goes, no, stupid, this. <laughs> and last night, in the Granite State, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump each crushed their competition by 20 points, turning our entire political system upside down. Outsiders are the insiders. Socialists are the establishment. These are now acceptable hairstyles. <laughs> and don't you say, and don't you say you saw this coming. Oh, I saw this coming. Shut up. <laughs> you did not see this coming. Maybe you saw it coming like last Friday, but not six months ago. Remember how these guys launched their campaigns? Trump making his slow descent down, <laughs> down Stair Force One, and Bernie Sanders announcing in what appears to be a public park with more microphones in attendance than people. <laughs> and now, some of the guys out on the cable news and the media saying, oh, this is inevitable. That's easy to say now. That's like driving on the highway, skidding off the road, and right before you slam into a tree saying, yep, that's the tree I was looking for, Dutch Elm. <laughs> Boom! And even though they said they saw it coming, somehow they're also disappointed with the voters. Today, the Huffington Post huffed. <laughs> WTF, GOP. And the cover of the Daily News today was Dawn of the Brain Dead. <laughs> and here's the thing. Because an avowed socialist and a reality star, that's who's leading. And I think I know what's going on here. It's almost Valentine's Day. <laughs> and the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> America's been told for years to pick the sensible candidate, the responsible one, a buddy, a pal, a uh, great on paper. You'll grow to love them. <laughs> but now it's getting swept off its feet by a couple of bad boys from the wrong side of the polls. <laughs> They're so dangerous, you just want to surrender your body politic and let them do what they will. <laughs> You'll never understand, Dad. At his rallies, he makes me feel things I've never felt before. <laughs> And if these guys do manage to make it all the way to the general election, it'll make for some great debates. Donald Trump is a billionaire. He's going to give our country to the 1%. Bernie Sanders is a clown. He's going to give our country to China. Donald Trump is a great negotiator. And at this point, I can't tell if I'm doing Trump or Bernie. I can't tell. <laughs> Honestly, the difference is not huge. <laughs> of course, one candidate who did not do so well last night is the winner of the 2016 presidential election, Hillary Clinton. And even she knows why. I know I have some work to do, particularly with young people, but I will repeat again what I have said this week. Even, even if they are not supporting me now, I support them. Yes, she's not reaching young people, so she's trying a new tactic. Disappointed mom. I know you're mad at me right now, but I still love you. It's okay if you need to be the bad guy. Just know that at the end of the day, I'm the one who's taking care of you, not your cool 74-year-old father who you <laughs> hang out with on weekends. He promises you everything, free college, single-payer health care. He doesn't care if you smoke pot. Well, guess what? That's not a plan. And someday, when you're an underperforming frontrunner yourself, you'll understand. I just hope that if you have voters of your own someday, they'll appreciate you, because clearly, somewhere along the way, I failed you as a candidate. So, if you decide to start acting like an adult, I'll be in South Carolina, and it wouldn't kill you to pick up the phone and make a few calls on my behalf. <laughs> now, go have fun with Bernie. I'll just sit here in the dark with Bill. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm I made you a card. Made with macaroni and gold paint says, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll put it over here. <laughs> and just like in Iowa, some of the last night's biggest winners were the losers. And the winningest loser of them all was Ohio governor and your school's second favorite shop teacher, John Kasich. <laughs> he finished second behind Donald Trump, and the establishment must be relieved because he has a sane, rational message for the voters. So for anybody who's here tonight, if I get elected president, head out tomorrow and buy a seatbelt because there's going to be so much happening in the first hundred days, it's going to make your head spin. Okay, just a quick question. Um, I'm on board with this, but uh, where do you buy a seatbelt? 
I don't, I looked around, there's nothing in the phone book that says, your options are to mug a stewardess, as far as I can tell, or just buy a whole new car and rip one out. Now, he, uh, I got this one right here. Now, uh, he said it was going to make my head spin, uh, so uh, I'll just apply it as the governor suggests. That is super painful. Okay. Ready for your inauguration, sir. By the way, if anyone wants to buy a non street legal Kia Sorento, please see my Craigslist ad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Marco Rubio came in a very disappointing fifth place, as opposed to Iowa, where he came in a triumphant third place. <laughs> No surprise after his disastrous performance in Saturday's debate, but to give the man credit, he took responsibility. Our disappointment tonight is not on you. It's on me. It's on me. I did not, I did not do well on Saturday night, so listen to this. That will never happen again. Confidence restored. <laughs> never happen again. Like when the Hindenburg said, just fill me up with hydrogen and send me back up there, guys. I'll show that lightning what fur. <laughs> but last night, the name on everyone's lips was Bernie Sanders. Unless you're Chris Hayes. You see that play out in different ways in both Trump's particularly closing message and railing against pharmaceutical companies and the like, and Bernie Sandwich's. Yes, right. That's right, Bernie Sandwiches. <laughs> a name everyone can get behind because he's not a member of the old boys club. <laughs> he fights the rich guys on behalf of the po' boys. Someone with a trusting open face and will surely win Florida by appealing to Cubans and... Uh, this is a French dip, so uh, uh, he is a Jewish candidate. <laughs> Plus, he has. <laughs> Plus, he has a long history of supporting the LGBT community. <laughs> sure, the Democratic establishment may have a beef with him now because he's been rubing them the wrong way. And I know it may sound hoagy. And he doesn't have it all wrapped up yet. But in times like these, his supporters believe we need a hero.